Hi. Um. Oh boy. Well. Uh, here we are again. Um. And I'm going to be absolutely honest with you, and I would just hope that uh, you're as honest with me too. Um. Do you think? that uh, this shirt makes my boobs look big? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I might have an issue with, um, I don't know, cleaning up after myself and organizing and uh, all that. Uh, believe it or not, I've actually done some cleanup and organizing in here. It was, it was, it was worse. Um, anyway, uh, welcome back to the, uh, uh, the Romper Room of Madness. Um, what I want to share with you today is if I can actually... Um, see it. <clears throat> what have I been doing? Um, I made this. Isn't this, isn't this beautiful? Um, this is, uh, I think what is known as outsider art. And, uh, you know, let the bidding begin. <laughs> what, in actuality, what this is, is, and, and if it wasn't raining today, I would go out and put it, uh, mount it in the Honda Fit. Um, this is, uh, if you're like looking into the engine bay of the Honda Fit, uh, the body mounts on the frame to which the engine mounts bolt two uh is is this plate on the passenger side and this plate on the driver's side and uh and so yeah this this is essentially a kind of a, a jig uh that uh locates these mounting points in space in three-dimensional space and uh <laughs> you know, I added some uh, some uh, uh, structural rod here for for extra stiffening, and uh, and this little guy here is for a wind resistance. Now this actually is sort of a, a, a guide that measures from uh, the engine mount area to the front of the engine. And so what I'm able to do with this now is sort of kind of jam it awkwardly into the uh, engine bay of the Fiat uh, in a little bit of futility because uh, the Fiat engine bay is actually smaller than the Honda Fit engine bay. But it starts to give me an idea of uh, where I can uh, position uh, these uh, frame mounts uh, in, the, in the sort of three-dimensional space of of this engine bay and uh, yeah it's 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 interesting it's a it's a it's an interesting um, mental exercise <laughs> shall we say um, but these things uh, this is just how I do it and it's it's straightforward and it uses up some scrap steel I had sitting around and uh, you know, it's just a, it's just part of the process. Uh, because uh, what I wanted to do is uh, essentially uh, make this as uh, straightforward as possible without having to you know custom make um, new engine mounts and stuff like that for the engine, um, because that's just a whole other. Uh, engineering uh, rabbit hole 
and I go down enough of those. <laughs> so, anyway, there's there's this, and uh, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be getting a lot of use later on. I've cleared out as as much as I could out of this little engine bay uh, to make space, um, pulling out, you know, all the wiring, uh, the brake master cylinders, and, you know, anything in that, in that manner. Um, and doing this, you have to keep a lot of stuff in mind. Uh, you have to keep in mind that there is a, there's going to be a radiator in front of the engine, and behind that radiator there's got to be a small fan of some kind. And uh, so yeah, everything has to fit. There's, there's stuff that goes in front of the engine, and then uh, there's stuff that fits behind the engine, and you know where the exhaust exits, and, uh, and how that all interacts with like the steering rack and everything, uh, because it's all very similar, but just slightly different from the Honda Fit to the Fiat 128. Um, and so the other half of, of this video is going to be uh, basically a show and tell of uh, me upgrading the front brakes on this car. And uh, that was also a very interesting and enlightening experience also. So let's get into that. Okay, so here we are in the uh, driver's side uh, front wheel well of uh, the Fiat 128. Okay, so um, here's a little hub and here's the stuff. Anyway, this was the uh, original brake disc for the uh, Fiat 128. Um, I don't know, it's like nine inches. Uh, I forget what, um, how many millimeters that is. Uh, probably like 235 or some, some uh, size along that way. Uh, it's a, it's a non-vented disc. So it's got just, you know, just one single uh, metal disc. And, you know, it's, it's all right, you know. Uh, this is the, uh, the brake caliper from the Fiat 128. It's a steel bracket carrier with a, an aluminum um, caliper, you know, thing uh, mounted in it. And it was, I guess, all right. Um, it's, it's kind of older technology uh, because it has like these little slider things in, in between the, the aluminum and the steel. And I guess, I don't know, it's, it's all good. But I just thought maybe, uh, Modernizing it a little bit wouldn't hurt. Um, ah. Okay, so uh, according to my calculations, what I, I got, I uh, ordered up a set of uh, 200 and I think 40 millimeter uh, Fiat Panda uh, vented rotors. So they're a little bit wider, they're vented. A uh, little, little bit heavier, of course, um, but uh, just much better uh, as far as heat dissipation. So that's yeah, that's just what what happens when when you step on the brakes. The friction pads of the uh, brake uh, caliper squeeze and slow the car down by creating crap tons of heat, and uh, and uh, it's. Vented rotors just uh, they're able to retain and uh, I guess uh, dissipate heat more efficiently and they just they, they're just sort of a a, a bigger better uh, solution that kind of everyone has has gone to and so yeah these are the fiat um, the new fiat 500 uh, brake calipers. This is just for the uh, the lounge or the pop. The, the pretty the basic, you know, meat and potatoes version, not the super hot Abarth fasty fast version. It's all steel caliper. It's an Ate caliper, so yeah, it's, it's a good caliper. Um, you can see they're kind of comparable in size, um, but of course, you know, this uh, is designed to accept a vented rotor, and so putting like you know a a you know, a narrow, non-vented rotor in this, in this would 
uh, not be very good because the, the pads would might fall out of the uh, carrier and everything. Anyway, so um, one of the issues, one of the things I discovered uh, when I started with Alancia was that uh, the, the bolts for these that bolt the brake caliper to the, the hub um, uh, and I'm just using uh, this is a little drill gauge and I'm, I don't have a metric drill gauge so I'm, I'm sorry for all my uh, friends in Europe and Canada and Japan that <laughs> are frustrated with me but um, on the little drill gauge <laughs> uh, the Fiat original Fiat 128 mounting bolt kind of measured out at 25 60 fourths uh, the Fiat uh, 500, the new one, um, mounting bolts for the brakes, brake caliper, uh, comes in at, what is it, uh, 15, 15 30 seconds, which is uh, 30 60 fourths, for those of you that are, are slightly math challenged. Uh, so, essentially, we needed to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 60 fourths in size from 25 to 30 60 fourths uh, so that we could mount this more modern Fiat uh, 500 uh, caliber. And so uh, what I did, uh, and let me just grab it the heck of it. is I've got a, 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 a drilling index set. And this is, you know, it's a fairly comprehensive one. It's got, you know, uh, a, a nice amount of bits. These aren't super fancy bits. These are just, you know, standard high-speed steel bits. Um, super absolutely useful to have in a garage if you're going to be doing, like, any kind of work like this. Um, and I just used, you know, like a standard... The cheapy lithium built uh, lithium battery drill uh, set on kind of a low uh, uh, high torque setting, and I essentially just started going up in 64th sizes um, because when you're enlarging holes like this, uh, it's just going up a, a tiny bit each time helps keep the axial. Uh, placement of the drill uh, more true, and uh, it doesn't break bits if you're not if you know if you if you get into a uh, a big you know piece of meat. A sixty fourth is very very thin, and so you're not going to there's not going to be a, a lot of issues with it. But you know you still want to do this very carefully, and going up a sixty fourth at a time uh, keeps the drill very well centered in the hole. So that you're not, you know, going off axis on the whole, you know, making the, the whole, you know, move, uh, you know, one way or the other. Uh, that said, you just got to do it carefully. Take your time. Um, and after I, uh, I got through it all, um, and just, you know, five drill bits worth of slow drilling with lots, lots and lots of oil, uh, the bolts fit very nice and tight in these holes and uh, the calipers bolt right up um, and and then the next thing is well um, is the distance from uh, this new mounting surface to where the rotor centers uh, in the bracket itself is not centered and um, what I've uh, figured out uh, I just made a cup. I, these were like an old street sign. They're aluminum, and because aluminum is a lot easier to machine than steel, I just made up uh, some spacers to kind of give me a guide to where uh, where the the brake needs to be spaced out away from the uh, uh, the hub or the the face of the uh, the hub or whatever it's called. I don't know. I'm not a technical guy. Anyway, uh, it basically, it turns out it needs to be spaced about a quarter inch 
away from the, the face of this. So it's very straightforward. And what it allows for is, I mean, you can use after, I mean, I need to re-drill these out. The original brake shields will fit uh, perfectly in here too. So, so you get that and uh, you get modern brakes. You get them positioned exactly where you want. And for a lot, and, and this is something for a lot of the Fiat X19 guys, um, I believe that this will actually fit inside a 13 inch wheel. I'm not exactly sure. I've thrown away all my old 13 inch steel wheels that came mounted on this. I, I went and took them to the recycler. Um, but yeah, I can do some measurements from like, you know, the center of the hub to like kind of the highest portion and uh, kind of give you a radius or, you know, a, a possible inner diameter. Uh, as you can see, like the sort of the back edge of the calipers kind of goes a little humpy thing. And so that'll be the, the thing that would most likely rub on it. Um, yeah, or, or possibly the, the front face, you know, how it's, however it's mounted away. But anyway, I'm thinking it, it could be a good solution to modernizing uh, the brake systems so that everyone can t take advantage of a modern brake system and, you know, instead of having to buy, uh, you know, a custom-made setup, you know, these are just standard Fiat 500 front calipers that you can get pretty much anywhere. And, and I believe I'll, I'll do, I'll mic out the, uh, the piston size, uh, but the piston size doesn't look that much larger than, than the standard piston. So I don't think it'll, you know, necessitate uh, going you know, up a different size in the master cylinder also. Anyway, um, what you guys want to see is it all put together and fit, so we will do that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, clean my hands up, put some gloves on, and we'll be back maybe after I go pick up some lunch because it's raining today and it's just kind of yucky. It just feels like one of those days where um, I want to go out for some more Mexican food and, you know, I might look a little, a little pregnant when I get back, but, uh, we'll just deal with that then. All right, and we're back. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, lady Baby wanted to uh, hang out in my arms after lunch. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, what she wants, she gets, usually. So, um... When I last left off, we were talking about uh, drilling through these uh, these little uh, bosses for the brake, and uh, it's the steel isn't super hard. It, it drilled pretty easily, but you know it was a little bit grabby. I mean, even though I was like only going up like a sixty-fourth of an inch each each cut, it was a little grabby. So you know you you really need to develop a nice uh, feel for drilling through stuff or just or doing anything mechanical. Uh, the feel is, is so much a part of it. Um, and that's just something you acquire as you, as, as you do this kind of stuff. Um, right, so I just totally had a brain fart. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll uh, put this lady baby back inside and uh, do a little quickie time-lapse uh, assembly of this. And you can see how that goes. All right. Uh, give me one second. 
All right, so yeah, I also just uh, quickly drilled this out. Um, this is going to add, uh, what, maybe a 32nd of a thickness to this, so hopefully that won't uh, necessarily uh, cause any rubbing. Um, when I was adding the, the aluminum spacers, uh, they seem to space it out a, a reasonable amount, but... Um, yeah, where's my calipers? There they are. These uh, calipers measure that this only spaces it out about... Oh, three sixteenths. And I think, uh, ideally, we want it to be a quarter inch. Um, which, coincidentally, is essentially what uh, this uh, face of the uh, this old brake rotor hat measures out to be. So I might just uh, cut out this guy from this brake disc, mount it on there, throw it on the inside of, of that brake hat, and, uh, and space it out uh, when all is said and done. Obviously, um, you know, maybe a little time down the road, I will uh, make some out of quarter inch aluminum, either that or actually utilize that uh, site send, cut, send, uh, you know, to have them just laser jet or water jet out uh, some, some spacers. Anyway, uh, let's continue with this. So, yeah. All right. First steps. First steps first. Okay. I'll uh, throw this guy on. Properly fits. Voila. Okay. So, yeah, brake shield is in place, caliper mounted, brake disc is mounted. Um, bearings probably need to be redone. They're a little, they're a little bit loosey-goosey in there and, you know, that's expected of a 40-year-old car, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm figuring of refreshing everything, all the running gear, that kind of stuff. Um, right now, we're just doing a quick assembly just to check out what kind of clearances we have. So, yeah, as is, it freaking rotates with very little interference. Um, I thought there was going to be more, uh, you know, rotor and caliper interference and that I would have to clearance out the caliper. I might have to do like a very, very, very light little... Uh, something something to it but uh, really it uh, it all both together very straightforward um, the uh, uh, brake lines I, I don't exactly know what I want to do about those yet uh, I haven't decided uh, if I want to try and run sort of the standard 128 lines with the, the banjo bolts or uh, see if the actual Fiat uh, 500 lines will go right down to them and and they quite may fit I mean they're obviously like uh, a little more a little shorter and honestly I don't know if this is the rear line of the Fiat 500 or the front line I don't know anyway that's for another day anyway uh, it all works it all fits together Oh, and back when I was having that brain fart while holding Zilly, <laughs> um, I was uh, discussing the mounting bosses, the lugs for mounting the calipers onto the hub. And uh, 
Yeah, there's plenty of meat. Um, uh, essentially, all that really needed to happen was for uh, the entire hole to be opened up by 1 16th. So a 30 second on either side, all, you know, all around the circle, 2 30 seconds equal a 16th. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, it's not a, it's not a huge hogging out of the holes to, to make these fit and work. And, uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very good solution. Um, yeah, and, uh, I'm still, um, kind of going through a little design phase in back, uh, with the, uh, with the rear calipers, I don't know if I'm going to mount them in front of the rotors or behind the rotors. Um, I'm basically kind of making a design that will, uh, I can like flip it other way, depending on, uh, I guess maybe how I feel. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, coming along. Um, yeah, I was like thinking there was in the, on the drum brakes, uh, the Fiat, uh, 128 has like a little lever that's attached to the uh, suspension control arm for the driver's side rear wheel and it goes up to a little uh, brake pressure modulator valve so I guess that when you apply brakes and the you know the, the car pitches forward the back of the car of course kind of pitches up a little bit because all the weight is being transferred to the front and I think that was designed so that the drum brakes have less brake pressure, so they don't lock up so readily um, in a braking situation. And I don't think that that's going to necessarily be needed for when I finish converting it over to discs, uh, because I think drum brakes have uh, different... Uh, kind of brake biting characteristics than the disc brakes and and I was curious because the Honda Fit has the same setup it has discs front and drums rear but and I didn't see any sort of compensating thing but what was in my mind is instead of using that kind of uh, that little valve compensator the pressure reducer uh, what it does is it's all uh, going through the anti-lock brake system. And so the, the ABS system, if it senses that the rears are locking up, it will reduce brake pressure in the back, allowing the, the wheels to turn. So, so yeah, but I am not running any anti-lock brake system. This is all going to be completely analog. Um, and so, yeah, that should be interesting. <laughs> we'll see how, how, that, how that goes. And if for any reason, um, yeah, I have, I have brake issues. I, I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve that I'm thinking about uh, already in my mind about that. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so, yeah, I, for everybody that's interested in this kind of uh, uh, modification, I think that uh, this is, as far as it goes, um, upgrading your antiquated brake system to, you know, sort of more modern uh, vented uh, rotor system uh, is, this is, seems to be like a very economical reliable, um, you know, fairly simple uh, thing to do. Um, finding the Fiat Panda brake discs, I mean, I did have to buy this set from the UK and it was like, it was like, it was a hundred bucks for, for brake rotors to get them, you know, shipped out here. Um, and that's kind of stupid. Um, but it works and uh, as light as these cars are and as uh, as like you know really you know like probably at this point over braked as this is 
I really do not anticipate and, and you know this this you know like going through brake rotors like a like a crazy person um, and this honestly this is going to be a street car it is not going to be a race car I'm not interested in it uh, we'll see I mean famous last words right I mean if if there were some hill climbs or some rallies yeah I I would kind of get interested in maybe seeing just what this car could do um, but that's uh, that's a whole lot more like you know development and stuff like that um, but really I just wanted to create a reliable uh, straightforward uh, solution to upgrading uh, brakes and uh, and I think it's it's uh, it's gonna be a good thing uh, the brake the brake system on the Lancia uh, is, is similar um, but I'm using um, larger rotors I mean not I mean comparatively not much larger I mean these kind of measure I mean these are like nine inches and these measure about nine and a half and the ones on the Lancia are probably ten inches so in the whole scheme of everything we're not going up you know massive sizes um, always in the back of my head is uh, unsprung weight uh, that's that's the bugbear that's the, the devil in the details that kind of screws up handling if you make everything all the this assembly uh, that you know is from the wheel to the hub all this stuff if that if that turns into you know a lead weight that can really degrade the handling of the car and uh, and lighter is best obviously in, in almost all circumstances and uh, simpler is best too and so that's what I'm really trying to do with this is just to you know I'm I'm <laughs> I'm kind of an idiot about keeping things simple but uh, I'm trying to do the best I can in the context of all this um, And I guess since we're, we've, we've gotten to that point now, we'll go into my little editorial section about uh, keeping things simple and doing things the best way. Uh, I don't know what the heck is going on with, uh, with this website and Google and all this crap. YouTube. I'm talking about you, YouTube. Uh, it's it's maddening oftentimes just getting on here to try and find what I'm looking for forget about even searching on Google how how they've essentially broken the internet and are just almost useless anymore when you search for something all you get is 10,000 uh, responses about uh, people trying to sell you shit versus any kind of information and so it's it's an epidemic problem just I guess like everything else and it almost seems like the entire thing needs to be rebooted and I mean it's it almost seems more and more that way that's almost how society everything needs to we just need to reboot everything back to where things were a little bit simpler and I'm not trying to be like you know like a boomer anything like that like all right things are all too crazy uh, but things have become completely unworkable because of this sort of uh, greedy capitalist mentality. Google, you fucked it up. And YouTube, because you are part of Google, you screwed it up just as bad. And it's not just them, it's Facebook, Meta, Instagram that Facebook owns or Meta owns. You've screwed it up for artists and everybody else, too. And look, I appreciate having, having a platform, having a, a, a place to share my ideas and, and my thoughts and my creations and, and whatever. Um, but you guys got greedy. You guys got so greedy. And... 
And one of the reasons why I really specifically I do not ask for any money, and I'm not going to ask for any money, is because I want to be independent of you, of everyone. I want to do whatever I want to do, and I'm not going to be held back. And honestly, I don't know if maybe I'm banning about the word honestly too much. I don't need to. Google just had to pay, you know, a big huge settlement for screwing around because of their incognito mode. And, and Google, you know, the lawsuit is all about, oh, you know, who's, who's being damaged? You know, show, show how you're being damaged to, you know, by Google for all this stuff. Dudes, since the internet has become such a, a factor, a utility, and that's become what it is, the internet is now a utility because everyone needs to use it. The fact that you guys are pulling the strings behind the curtains and this might start getting me unsubscribed randomly by YouTube and Google and they might try to be screwing with me. Google has been screwing around with and YouTube has been screwing around with other makers. Um, there's a chilling effect. There is a distinct chilling effect. And, and also, when the, uh, the, the Patriot Act was uh, approved by Congress, and suddenly, oh, you know, oh, no, 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 we're not interested in, in following your every little habits. Bull crap. Everyone, these, these corporations, the government, they are all following you. Every little do, you know, thing you do, you have no privacy. And as citizens anywhere, in any country, we should have the absolute right to privacy. And a lot of these younger generation, they've grown up not understanding that, not knowing that their lie that they have an absolute right to privacy and they've been giving it up and we all have been pushing you know and they've been pushing us to sort of I don't know give up our our rights and our and our entitlement of, of being private in our lives and that's one of the reasons why I'm a very late adopter of technology I, I don't buy the the most absolute latest thing. I don't I don't put Wi-Fi gadgets all over my house. Um, I don't need people to start tracking my data and selling it. And my data should be my data. We should have an inalienable right to all of our data, and if a corporation wants to access our data, they have to ask us first and it has to be restricted for very specific purposes that the corporation has to follow the regulations for. It's, everything is just wide open now. And they're like, oh no, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Oh no, it's too late. Bullshit. Bullshit. That genie needs to get its ass back in the bottle. Anyway, screw you, YouTube. Screw you, Google. I appreciate giving me a platform to, to speak my mind, but I'm never going to be a slave to you. And I hope everyone out there doesn't feel that similar kind of chilling effect on, wow, should I say this? Should I truly speak my mind? And I'm not talking about, like, crazy extreme stuff. Extremists, yeah, yeah, more power to you, extremists. You know, spout off your head, speak your mind to the loudest possible, you know, iota possible, because we need to know that you idiots are out there. But just normal people who feel like they can't speak up and speak their mind and speak their truth because they feel that they will be somehow tracked 
or it will be recorded, or they will be retaliated against, or and they will be, and basically that they that their social uh, credit score will be dinged somehow, and they will start losing access to aspects of their lives unless they toe the line. That's so corrosive. And I think that has been corroding at, at our society for the, at least the last decade, if not the last 20 years. And honestly, all I can say is we need to not tolerate this crap anymore. Anyway, I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me. I will do my best to clean up this garage a little bit so that it's not also, it's not just a hazard of, of accidents and, and the next time you see me, I'll have like a patch on my <laughs> casts everywhere and band-aids. Um, I, I enjoy doing what I do and I hope you enjoy watching and I hope you can enjoy what you do and don't feel restricted in being able to speak your truth. Anyway, that's, that's all I got today. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Greetings, friend. Do you wish to look as happy as me? Well, you've got the power inside you right now. So use it!